All right, welcome back. In this video, I want to go over the method on how to determine if a set of vectors spans Rn. Um, this, this method works for any number of dimensions, but the example that I'm going to do in this video today is just going to be in two dimensions because it's just an easier kind of example to work through, and then we can visualize it after in this 2D drawing space. So the question that we want to solve, or the example is, do these two vectors span R2? So let's just erase these, and we'll replace these with... Uh, R2. So this process would work if these were three-dimensional vectors or a hundred-dimensional vectors, it really doesn't matter. Um, and then the other way we can write this question is in this form saying does R2, basically all the set of all two-dimensional real numbers, um, equal the span of these two vectors. So the span of a set of vectors is just the set of all linear combinations of those vectors. So basically in R2, if these vectors aren't parallel, there would be some scaled up and scaled down version that we can add these all together to to get any other vector. So basically what it's asking is there's some expression where we have a scalar times the first vector, which is 2, 1, plus another scalar times the second vector, which is negative 1, 1. And uh, can that equal any imaginable vector. So I write it as a, b. You can, again, you can just pick two other letters here or any two letters you want because we're just saying any x component and any y component. Is there some combination of these that will basically like satisfy any possible outcome uh, in R2? So the other way that we could draw this too, um, if, if you don't like it in this form, basically this is the same thing as writing a little coefficient matrix here where we'd have 2, 1, negative 1 and 1 times this vector with the components x, y, um, and then that would just be equal to a, b. So these things, these two statements are basically the same. Um, you've been, you'll, if you've watched the last couple videos, I'm always putting it into this form, but really it's no different than writing it in this form where our solution is basically this vector here with components x and y, or those x and y's are basically the scalars that we multiply to each of those given vectors when we're doing a linear combination to get the target vector. All right, so if you remember from the last videos, then the way that we solve something like this is we can write it as an augmented matrix. So when we're solving for this, if we can reduce this to reduced row echelon form with our elementary row operations and find that there's at least one solution, then that means that there is at least one solution for any possible basically target vector a b which would mean that we can basically add up some combination of these two other vectors to get any possible vector in r2 which basically means that they span r2 so the first thing that we want to do is i think we'll switch these two rows um our first elementary row operation let's do r2 switch with r1 and then we want to reduce this to a zero so for our next row operation let's do r2 minus two times r1 so row one will be unaffected. And then we have two minus two times one, that gives us zero. Negative one minus two times one gives us negative three. And then A minus two times B gives us A minus two times B. All right, the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna get this to a one. So let's go and divide row two uh, by negative three. So if we come down here, uh, row one again will be unaffected, one, one, B, and then row two here, we're gonna get zero, one, and then all this stuff is just going to get a little bit messy. It's gonna be A minus two B all over negative three. All right, now the last thing that we need to do here to get it into reduced row echelon form, which looks like it's actually possible for us, is uh, have um, row one minus row two. Okay, so row two is going to be unaffected. And then we have for the first element, we have one minus zero is still one. One minus one is zero. And B minus all this stuff is just exactly as it sounds, B minus all that stuff. Cool, so this uh, side, the right-hand side of the augmented matrix is really ugly. There's a lot of stuff in here, but really we've got the left-hand side down into reduced row echelon form. We've got some numbers or some things over on this side. Basically what this is indicating to us is that we do have one unique solution. Um, and more importantly is there is at least one solution um, because if there was no solution, that would mean that they do not span R2. 
two in this case, but because we do have a unique solution, that means that they do span R2. And really also what this means is basically for any vector A, B in R2, there's going to be a corresponding X and Y that we can multiply to these other two vectors basically to sum them up to get that vector. So that's cool, but like what's actually going on here, this is a pretty jumbled up thing, and it's pretty possible that we made a mistake along the way and falsely think that we have a single unique solution to this. Um, so really what we should do is we should recognize that x here by, by our augmented matrix, x is equal to this number or this expression. And then uh, y is this other expression. Then we should just sub in our values for x and y. So we've got x right here and we've got y right here just like we had in this original expression. And then through the properties of scalar multiplication, we're gonna take this whole expression and multiply it by this element, and then we're gonna take it again and multiply it by this element to basically get the scalar multiple of this vector. So when we do that, basically we're just going to distribute it all in. And this is the vector that is the result of the scalar multiplication of this expression, which is at the end of the day, it's just a scalar uh, times the vector. We can do the same thing over here, and this is actually gonna be a little bit easier. And uh, if what we set up here is true, that we have a single unique solution, uh, then really the left-hand side of this equation should equal the right-hand side as we've said it should. And the easiest way to determine this is to, uh, from this point, is to write it as a system of linear equations. So when we look at this, 2b, this is really equal to um, 6 thirds b, like that. So 6 thirds minus 4 thirds minus 2 thirds, that's 0b. So we can cross all those guys out. They cancel to 0. And then 2 thirds a plus 1 third a, well, yeah, 2 thirds plus 1 third is just equal to 1a. So yeah, that's that's good. That is saying that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. We've got A on the left and we got A on the right. When we look at the second expression, we have negative two-thirds B plus two-thirds B. So those are going to cancel out. And then we have one-third A minus one-third A. So those are going to cancel out. And that looks good too, because we are left with only B on the left-hand side and B on the right-hand side. So we're saying that, yeah, B is equal to B. Or more importantly, this whole expression that we wrote out with these values, with these kind of expressions for x and y in terms of a and b were, were correct when we, when we found them and said that that was the one single unique solution to this system. So really, if you were answering this on a test and uh, this was the question and the answer was just a yes or no, saying do they span R2, then you really could have stopped here and just said yes they do, but it is sometimes nice if you have the time to go and check to make sure what you actually calculated makes sense and is true. And just think about this graphically because this is R2, we can plot it, and hopefully you can imagine that there is some uh, scaled up and scaled down combination of these two vectors that you could use to basically um, do vector addition to get to any possible point in the space. For example, if you just pick a random point like um, I don't know, like right here, for example, what you could do is you could stretch out the blue vector to, uh, to some point, which would be about there. And, uh, and then you would add in a scaled version of a green vector here. And, uh, we could get to that point. Similarly, we could get to this point, that point, we could get anywhere in uh, two dimensional space. Now, a situation where this might not be true and where you would end up finding basically a row of zeros and then a number indicating that there's no solution would be that if the two vectors were um, were like parallel to each other from the get-go. If we wanted to add up the linear combinations, all possible linear combinations, basically to get the span of these two vectors, then it would just be a straight line that would be parallel to those two vectors in the first place. And there would be no combination of this blue one and the orange one to get out to this red dot here, basically, um, which was, I guess, this position vector like that. No combination of the orange one and the blue one could possibly get us there. So that would be a case where we'd say, like, no, the two vectors do not span R2. So that's a nice little visualization that we can do in R2. But I did mention at the beginning of the video that this method works for vectors in any number of dimensions. So basically, if you set up an augmented matrix that looks like this, where each of the columns would be your vectors, so you'd have like V1, V2, you know, all the way up to N vectors that you're dealing with, 
all with n dimensions going down. Um, and then you set the right hand side to just like variables that are just general variables. And you just have one basically for each dimension going up to the nth dimension or the nth variable, basically matching the number of rows here that you have on the left hand side. Then if you perform your elementary row operations and you find that there's at least one solution, then you'll know that that set of vectors spans Rn. Whereas if you find that there's no solutions indicated by a row of zeros and then a non-zero number here, um, then you would know that even without being able to visualize this in like beyond three dimensions, um, you would know that those uh, vectors do not span Rn in that case. So there you go. That's the method that you do it. Hopefully the visualization helps in R2. And just remember that this does work for solving in any number of dimensions. And uh, yeah, hope it helps.